If you've been following along with any of the online tutorials on how to create a Go package, you probably have come across something like this, where you find, hey, go.mod not found. And if you're particularly new to getting started, that's obviously very frustrating. So let's walk you through why and how and what the purpose of that file is. So first off, it's a good idea that if you've just freshly installed Go to check that you have a Go path set and what that Go path is. Um, this, by the way, can be any path in terms of you can change it. It doesn't really matter. The only important thing is the content. So in this case, we're going to quickly show that there is no content. So at the moment, this directory is empty. Now I also have in the background the Visual Studio code open, so you'll be able to see what happens as I go along. So I'm going to simply go to my Go mod path, and I'm going to create a couple of directories. Now these are very important because they're required by the packages in terms of, they're like staging positions, places to place files. So the bin, the PAG, the uh, SRC, they're not always used in every scenario, but it's useful to have them. Now normally you would not create your um, project directory in it, but a, I'm lazy, and B, it saves me switching directory, so I'm just going to create a new folder. This is going to be where I'm going to store this particular project. Now, one of the things that separates the, the older Golang um, documentation and the current one is you realistically need to initialize your project. So using the Golang initialize and then giving the project a name. Now, the convention usually is like GitHub slash name of repository etc um, doesn't need to be that but it generally is kind of a, a best practice to follow now doing that one of the things that it will do immediately is go ahead and create this mod uh, well go dot mod and it also helps if I spell it initialize correctly um, and it creates that file and if you look closely we can say that, okay, we just have this one file now with the name of the module and the version of Go that it's actually based on. So it's using the current version that they have installed. So I'm going to go ahead and create a main package. So it's just a main uh, file. I'm going to throw in some code here, which I know is working in the rest, to kind of demonstrate what else happens. So here we now have a file. Now I'm aware that this works. I've tested it. So if I go ahead and say, okay, I'm just going to do a go run, in theory, it should just work, right? Well, first of all, I do have a dependency here, so I'm going to have to resolve that dependency first of all, which is straightforward. It's a perfectly valid request, right? So go get and name of package. And what we're going to notice is when we do that, if you pay close attention, another file appears, a go sum file. And this contains all of the packages that were just pulled in. So all the sub dependencies and our original mod file now contains the packages that we're using as part of our code. So what it's doing is building up a list of what your dependencies are. So it knows what to include. So that's kind of important. Also, if I hit control S just to save the file again and then go ahead and run it, you'll see this time it will work. So what that file actually is, is to give you a list of dependencies so that when you're building your package, you don't miss anything. 